what's going on y'all we are out here today on the old town autopilot 120 and we are just heading down into this marsh creek system right here got my buddy corey and rusty off in the distance and today we're going to be looking for some speckled trout maybe even some redfish but hopefully we get on some giant trout we had a cold front move through last night so i feel like the fish are going to be in these areas y'all stay tuned let's get after it so we can find us some so the lure that we're going to start off throwing this morning is the southern salt hoodwink uh, this is one of our brand new colors right here this is called our haymaker kind of that pearl white with a little chartreuse tail on it beautiful color matches the water that we got here, perfect. I don't know if y'all can see that flipping through the water, but it looks great. That's the deal, that's the lure we're gonna be throwing. And I think, I think it's gonna be a winner. Oh, right there. Just as I was saying that, that is our first fish of the morning. Right there, beautiful little speckled trout. Now this guy is not gonna be legal. We are keeping today. We are looking for some around 17, 18 inches to take back to the house. This guy, only about 12. So, oh, we'll see you, buddy. Appreciate the bite. Got him. Oh, he let go of it. Missed that one. Got him. There we go. That's going to be speckled trout number two. Do we got us a keeper? yeah <laughs> well there went my first keeper that was about a 16 17 inch trout y'all not the size we're looking for but that one would have made the box and uh i just let him go right there at the boat oh nope we're on again there we go another keeper successful boat flip yeah all right y'all well that is hooked trout number three right there I'm actually, I believe he's a keeper. We're gonna let him go. I want him just a little bit longer. I'm not gonna keep too many today, two or three. I want some of the bigger ones. All right, see you dude. Bye bye. All right y'all, we are on some fish right here and catching them on the doggone hoodwink. So we're in this creek system, like I said, a little marsh creek. It's got decent depth to it. I'm on again. That's a better one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good trout. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the first one for the box. I was going to attempt to explain kind of what we got going on here. And y'all look at the quality of that trout right there. That's what we're looking for. Not too big to keep. Not too small. Perfect size. There she is, y'all. We're going to put her on a board just to check it out see what we're looking at here and that is a fat 16 and three quarter inch trout there we go first one for the box all right well like i was saying this little creek system that we got here is about four to six foot on average but it's just deep enough that when it gets cold those fish really come on into these areas and we got a good falling tide today which we can see a lot of bait kind of just getting flushed around us and stuff. So we should be on a pretty good feeding window for most of the morning. But yeah, that got whacked again. Yeah, if y'all are after speckled trout and redfish, if it gets cold, can't go wrong with finding you a nice deep creek that funnels a lot of current because these fish are going to stack up in these areas. Got another one. There we go. Yeah, Corey just caught him a real nice one over there. I got this little old tiny guy. See, dude, <laughs> we are on some fish. All of us are sitting here using these hoodwinks and we are catching a ton of fish. If y'all have not purchased these or checked them out, now is the time to do so because we got a lot of really good colors in stock right now that we just got <clears throat> there's another one back to back cast this is going to be one of those days y'all where you don't go fishing you go catching because they are fired up right now 
Oh my goodness, Nate. That? That a boy. <sighs> it was a good recovery is what that was. <laughs> that could have been a horrible backlash. <clears throat> Got him. That's another keeper. We're gonna let him go. He's a little on the small side, probably 16 or so. See you, dude. So great morning out here so far. We really just got started. The further we push back in this creek, we're gonna to start to really get on some better quality fish, I do believe. But check it out. Uh, like I stated earlier, the lure that we're using today is the Southern Salt Hoodwink. Haymaker is the color that we're throwing today. But y'all check it out. If y'all are looking to purchase some of our lures, I'm gonna link them down below. And now is a really, really good time to go ahead and make an order because we have a Black Friday sale that's going on right now. Uh, so we have 30% off everything inside the store so if y'all want to take advantage of the discounts go over there check it out right now also if you spend over fifty dollars you're going to get three free packs of hoodwinks uh in your order as well as your 30 percent discount so yeah y'all go over there check them out pick you up some hoodwinks y'all are seeing it we are catching a ton of fish got a couple of decent trout we're still looking for that giant i think it can happen let's get in here See if we can find us some more. Y'all, Rusty is hooked up on a big trout. Rusty just hooked up on a big trout. Yeah. Sitting here talking to the camera and he hooked up right there. Get him in the net. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Look at that one with a doggone hoodwink haymaker sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> right on, man, nice catch, Rusty. That is probably a 20, 21 inch trout right there. So good catch, man. All right, y'all back to work. There he is. Come here, that might be good fish, red fish. All right. There you go. That'll mix it up a little bit. That is probably a just barely legal redfish. They gotta be 16 here in Alabama. And he's probably right there on the edge of it. But I'm not keeping the 16 inch redfish. We're gonna let this guy swim. Appreciate the bite, buddy. Just kind of continuing to push down this creek. We hit a little bit of a dead zone, but there's some nice little bends up here, some deeper holes. And I would expect, <clears throat> I just got hit again. I don't know, might be on them right here. But yeah, we're sitting around four foot of water. There's some eight foot holes back here that should be holding some fish. We're just gonna keep on creeping down this creek. Got them, there we go. What do we got, what do we got? Oh, speckled trout. That's another one that would keep. We're gonna throw him back. Still looking for a little bit bigger. So I get a lot of questions from people asking how I retrieve uh, these lures. So it's real simple. If I'm fishing for trout, this is my go-to retrieve. I'm just gonna pick up my slack, or pick up my rod, reel down my slack. Pick up my rod, reel down my slack. And what that's causing that lure to do is glide through the, the water, right? If I'm fishing for trout, I don't want my lure to be all the way on the bottom bouncing in the mud. I want it to be in the middle of the column gliding back and forth. So just something like that right there. Oh, I just got hit. It was a little bite. It was a bite. That's pretty much the deal. Now, if I am fishing for redfish or flounder, I will then go to a kind of a fluttering it right off the bottom and staying down in the mud so you'll see me start to do some twitches and things like that but the deal today has been trout so we're gonna stick or just gliding that lure through the water column all right well we have pushed a pretty good little ways back in this creek i mean it is almost completely fresh didn't find the speckled trout that I was hoping to find. So we're gonna go back out to the mouth now where we found those trout earlier today. And we're gonna see if we can't pick that area apart, catch some more. All right, 
back out where we were at earlier, see if the bite is still on out here. All right, y'all, we are back at the house now. It got extremely windy out there. It's windy at the house right now. We got some heavy squalls that are going to be moving through. A lot of wind picking up. Temperatures are dropping. So we just decided to go ahead, call the trip right there. Had a great morning on the water. Caught a lot of trout. And we did take this one guy home right here that uh, I went ahead and started cleaning. I will uh, show y'all how I clean this speckled trout. I'll do this other side for y'all right here. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be going out back and throwing this guy uh, in some grease. Probably gonna be making a sandwich, something like that. But I will show y'all how it comes together. These guys are extremely tasty and I'm gonna show y'all one of the best ways that I like to cook them. I do apologize. I went ahead and started cleaning this guy and then I realized that I should probably film this process. Uh, I've had requests in the past for uh, people to want to see how I clean fish and stuff like that. So, got our speckled trout. We are using our Sword 9 inch medium flex fillet knife. Um, these are amazing fillet knives. I can't say enough good things about them. I highly highly recommend them i will link them down below if anybody wants to check them out uh, but for this speckled trout we're just going to come in right here behind the gills and we're just going to cut down to the backbone and from there we're just going to curve that knife along that spine just like that and one two there we go And from there, we're just gonna make sure we're keeping our knife flat up against the backbone right there. And speckled trout is really, really simple, easy. One, probably one of the easiest fish out there to clean. And then here's the thing. When we're doing our speckled trout and we're filleting that meat off the backbone, we wanna make sure that we don't cut all the way through. We wanna leave a little bit of meat right there so we can flip that fillet off and then all we got to do from there is come in on that skin keeping our knife flat take a couple of nice swipes and there it is right there that is our speckled trout fillet now I am going to go ahead and just remove the rib cage, but that's pretty much it. That's our two speckled trout fillets. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and prep some stuff and I'll see y'all on the back porch. Okay, so we got everything set up right here. It's going to come together real easy. Just got some flour, some panko crumbs, some uh, beaten eggs right there, a little bit of mayo, pickled tomato, onion. We got our fillets right there some buns and the seasoning that I'm gonna be using is some Spanglish Osadero Surf and Turf. This stuff is really, really good, uh, especially on fish and shrimp. So we're gonna be using that to season it. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the Blackstone over here and I got some peanut oil that we're gonna get going. So we're just gonna turn that on, give it a little light. There we go. And we're gonna look for our oil to get somewhere around 350 degrees. Then while we're waiting on our oil to get the temperature, we're gonna go ahead and prepare our fish. So it's real simple. We just got our flour right here. And all I'm gonna do is put that seasoning. And we're gonna not be shy about it. Make sure we put a good healthy amount and then mix that in with our flour. Do a little bit more. There we go. So this seasoning right here is a little bit different than what we use most of the time down here in the south. We tend to use more of a um, cayenne based uh, seasoning like Tony's uh, or stuff like that uh, but this is more of kind of like a, a, a savory herby taste right it's got a lot of herb in it uh, not a whole lot of heat so if you do want to add some heat 
you can add a little bit in there as well but that's pretty much that now we're just going to take our fish drop it down in our flour just like that and we're going to give it a good toss all right and then from there we're just going to pull our fillets out of that seasoned flour We'll drop it in our egg wash. Give it a good toss around in there. Make sure we get it all nice and coated. That egg wash is what's gonna help keep everything kind of binded and stuck together, right? Without that egg, a lot of your breading is gonna come off when you put it in the grease. So it is a very, very necessary step. Uh, and then also, this is a, a step where you can also flavor your egg wash. A lot of people put hot sauce, uh, pickle juice, all kinds of stuff in there. I don't know about pickle juice. I've seen pickle juice used somewhere. I don't remember. Anyways, hot sauce uh, goes really, really good in that egg wash. Once again, if you're trying to get a little bit of heat. Now we're just going to take our fillets out of there. And we're going to drop it into our seasoned panko crumbs. And then we're just going to toss it around one more time. Making sure everything's nice and coated real good. And then from there, we're just going to let this kind of just hang out till our oil uh, gets up to temperature. And we're almost done. It's a real simple lunch. I mean, this is, you can't go wrong coming off the water and just coming out here, heating up some grease, coating some fish, throwing it on there. I mean, it's probably the best way to eat fish uh, is fried. So yeah, it's going to be really, really good. Almost done. Temperature on our oil has climbed to about 350 right now, so we're gonna go ahead and just take our fillets out of the panko crumbs there. And yes, that sizzles what we want right there. As soon as we put it in the grease, oh man, it's already smelling good. Alright, we're gonna let that go and turn until it turns golden brown, maybe do one flip about halfway probably only gonna take about five minutes or so maybe not even that long got the right color on it give it a little flip all right our fish is looking about ready yeah buddy there we go pull that out right there just gonna let that kind of hang out on these paper towels to uh absorb a little bit of that grease and then we're going to be ready to start building our sandwich. All right, so this is how this thing's about to go down right here. We got us a little bit of hamburger bun as our bread. Y'all can use whatever you got. I did not feel like making a trip to the store. I uh, had a lot of these uh, ingredients. I pretty much had everything already at home. So we got us some hamburger buns right here. And I'm going to put some mayo down on that. And this is just a real simple dish. Nothing fancy, I man. I know some of the dishes we put here on the channel are a little bit out of reach. When I say out of reach, you definitely got to go to the store, pick up some of the ingredients. This is something that, you know, most people will have a lot of this stuff already laying around the house. It's just real simple. Um, no running to the store. It's a great way to end the fishing trip. All right, and then from there, we're going to slide us some fish. All right, and then so the vegetables that I got here, we got some tomato, we got some pickles, got a little bit of fresh onion. All right, y'all, well, y'all saw it right here. Beautiful sandwich. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go in the moment of truth right here. Mm. Y'all hear that crunch? That is spectacular. I mean, that is an awesome sandwich. I don't normally go in for two bites, but I'm going to. That is so good. So good, so simple. Man. Well, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If y'all did, leave a like, comment with any questions, subscribe if you haven't already, and oh, 
like I said, go check out the link below. We got our Black Friday sale going on right now. Check out the website, 30% off all of our products. Anything over $50 gets three extra packs of lures. So y'all check it out. We'll see y'all next time.